All right, guys, welcome back to the third tutorial in the series of Pure Pursuit and Motion Profiling. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to do the line and circle intersection that we're going to need for our path following. And let's just get started. All right, so we have our path that looks something like this. And, the, and one of the key aspects of Pure Pursuit is that we're going to want to, the way we follow paths is by extending a circle and then uh, that's that's practically a circle and then so say our robot location was like here and then using the and then following the location that intersects closest um, on the line with the circle so it's pretty simple pretty simple idea and it's a lot of drawn out math and it's just there's, there's no time for that we don't have there's no time to do math we just we just use Mathematica don't don't do that okay so we, we just have to set up the basic equation where we have um, where we have mx plus b, uh, that's our that's our line. That's that's the line that we're comparing because we're gonna have to go through each of these lines in a, in a list, um, and that so that's e equals y, and then y also equals or um, oops, x squared plus y squared equals our r squared, and that's the r of the circle. So then we can solve for y, or just um, we can even yeah, let's solve for y. So y squared equals r squared minus x squared. Um, y equals, or let's set y squared equal to each other. So then we can just square both sides of this. And we get mx plus b squared oops, equals r squared minus x squared. All right, so now... Uh, there's no time to do that, so you just you plug plug that in. Mx plus b squared equals r squared minus x squared. You ask it to solve it. So this is um uh, symbollab.com, really good good website. And there we go. There's there's no there's no time to do that by hand. All right, so all right, let's go back to the code and back to our let's go to math functions because this is a math function, yeah. And we're going to create a new method called public static, and it's going to return um, an array list of points. And the reason for that is because we could have two intersection points, and it's up to our algorithm later to decide which one of them. Um, so you can import any of these works. So let's just do the regular Java one: uh, line, circle, intersection, and um, I guess I'll just pass in the components of the vector separately. I know it's, this should probably be a point. Actually, let's just do it as a point, fine. Uh, point, circle, um, uh, center, uh, and then we need a double radius. Now we need a point, line, uh, or this is the first point of the line. So line, point one, point, line, point two. All right. And that should be pretty much it. So one more thing. So first of all, same thing as same as we usually do it. We ignore the hard cases and just make our lives easier because there's no time to do real do real math. Just just don't worry about it. Okay. Whoops. Not line one. Uh, line point one dot y minus our. Um, oops. I want the absolute value inside here. Line point. 2.y and if that's less than like a very small amount then honestly just don't worry about it line line point one dot y equals line point two dot y plus 0 0.03 all that's doing is that's just saying that we can't we don't want to have uh oh i don't like actually don't use this don't use that that point class re re-import this uh do the open cv one sure or create your own point if you want all right, so then um, that's all, all that's saying is that if the y's are really close, we have almost a vertical line. Just just don't do that. Don't don't worry about it. Um, and we're gonna do the same for the uh, x's because we're gonna want to use perpendicular slopes eventually. Um, so when when the when the slopes become perpendicular, then um, we we have to, it's basically um, if we had a slope of zero, that would become a slope of infinity once again. So we have to do this for the x's as well. Uh, x equals line point two dot x plus zero point zero zero three. Oops. All right, just yeah. I mean, we could we could worry about the 
actually coding it correctly, but I just don't want to. So, okay, so M1. Um, now, now let's calculate the slope of the first line, line point two dot y minus line point one dot y, rise over run. Very simple line, uh, line point two dot x minus line point two dot y, and then. Now, coming from the Mathematica, we basically have a quadratic here. So I'm just going to define the three terms of the quadratic. Luckily, I've already done this. And basically, we'll call this quadratic A equals 1.0 plus math.pow of M1 and 2. That's just squaring M1. Then, uh, what do, else do we have to do? Oh, yes. We have to make sure... One, the math really simplifies easily, nicely if we define the circle x as zero. So we can honestly just shift um, the the points to be so that when they're at the circle's origin, they're at zero. It really it's a really nice trick, and you can just add it on later and just just don't worry about it. Um, so yeah, line point one dot x minus circle x. Oh, this is a circle center. I'm so used to dividing up all the components and it's bad I know it's less arguments this way it is cleaner but I don't even know okay so circle center dot y and there we are so now now it's time to define our quadratic b double quadratic b equals and I've of course already done this again so you guys can just copy this down or I really encourage you to do the math on your own and by on your own I mean use Mathematica um, and and actually use your own uh, setup because then you'll understand it better and then if you if there's any oh, I made a mark okay I'm assuming that this is nothing yeah but you'll you'll definitely understand it more and whenever there's a problem it's nice to be familiar with your own code instead of just copying but um, in something like a line circle intersection, I'm kind of okay with just giving it to you because it's just, it's just a math function. There's probably a library that does there, that somewhere. And there we go. So yeah, this is times x1. Okay. So yeah, we're setting up a quadratic here, basically. Quadratic C equals uh, math up how again, m1 squared times math up how. And, uh, Fun fact, I actually did, Steven and I did all this by hand on a whiteboard, and then it was like erased one time. I think it was like, I don't want to put my sister on the line, but like, I forget, someone erased it, and it was, it was bad. <laughs> we lost all the work, and we had to do it twice. This giant equation, and it's just, it was, it was annoying. Yeah, let's just import POW statically. Just, yeah, that's just easier. Okay, so pow, r and two. Oh, circle radius, circle radius. Oh, it's just called radius. Pow radius two, and there we go. Did I forget any brackets? Yes, I forgot some. We need these. Do we? Uh, no, on my example, I brackets for no reason. Okay, so there we go. Now we're going to need an array list of point, and this is going to be um, all points. Create a new array list. Make sure it's initialized. We don't want those errors. Um, so now um, here's the architecture I, I decided. I basically say try and calculate the intersection, and if the, the circle doesn't intersect, just deal with it in an exception, and. It makes it really easy to avoid like uh, actually uh, calculating when it will fail instead of just just doing it and seeing where it fails and then dealing with it accordingly. So yeah. So we'll put this in a try catch, and we'll call this double x root one. And so you guys got to be familiar with the quadratic formula. Of course, it's just negative b, so quadratic b. Um, plus uh, the square root of of b square, uh, and I make sure to import that statically. Let's okay. Just just do yourself a favor and just import it star. There we go. Plus pow um, quadratic b b squared. So yeah, that's the b squared term minus four times a 
times c and then finally divided by 2 oops 2 times quadratic a and voila now this is the negative b so it's the, you got to remember it's a plus or minus so there's there's two roots so we'll have to do this again for the second root but let's just deal with the first root for now so we can just plug basically back into our line equation here m1 times x root 1 minus x x1 plus y1 that's just our mx what okay i'm just getting familiar with my preview of my webcam okay that's cool never mind sorry about that <laughs> okay so yeah we just plug back into our line equation where this is our um, m1 times x minus x1 plus b this is point slope form should be pretty simple okay so x root 1 so yeah now we get back to the point where we remember that we defined everything in terms of the circle center being uh, 0 to make the math easier because I mean Stephen and I tried to to, to solve it manually with the with the offset and it, it it just went off the whiteboard there was just it wasn't fun so just don't 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 do that to yourself if there's a simplification you can make like just making everything relative to the center just just do it it's it's not the end of the world it's not like uh we all have to solve the perfect math equation instead of just making it easier okay sometimes i don't know what i'm saying circle center dot x so x, y root 1 plus equals circle. So now we're reapplying the offset because we subtracted it over here. We have to re-add it over here. Let me comment that. Um, put back the offset. Who says that? Put back the offset. Oh, okay, I don't care. Um, so now we have to do, now we have to make sure it's in the range of the segment. So um, double min x equals line. We, we basically... We're going to use a bounding box equation for this. So say we have, um, let me get my Wacom tablet. So here's where we are currently. We have our circle and say we have an, uh, a, an intersection over here. Or let's say we have a, 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 a case like this, where we have the segment going like this. One intersection's over here and one intersection, since we're using, the equation assumes it's a line. Um, we would also have an, an equation, an intersection over here. So basically, we're going to make an algorithm that basically says make sure we're in the box, the bounding box of this line. If you're not in the bounding box of this line, then like this one would be, then just throw it out. We don't want that one. So let's go back over here. Oh, yes. And the other problem is we don't know which order these ports, these, um, sorry, points are on. So we're going to have to figure out which one's the first one and the second one. Or the basically we're we're basically finding the bounding the ba the bounding box of the line. So first we want our min x, so line x1 is less than um, I keep using line x1. Uh, line point 1 dot x is less than line point 2 dot x. This is the ternary operator. It's just like a mini if statement. So if that's true, then our min x is line point 1 dot x. And otherwise, then it's line point two dot x, and we're going to copy and paste that for the y. There we go, and just change that up. All right, so now we can finally do um, the intersection. So if well, it, it, make sure it's in the bounding box since we have the min and, and min x and the y and the maximum x. So if x root 1 is greater than min x, whoops, silly me. Okay, so we actually don't need the y because if you think about it, we're on a, a line. So we can just use only the x to determine if we're on it or not. And that should work perfectly fine, assuming that it's not vertical, which we do because I don't want to deal with them. So let me minus this out. Okay, so we just need two things. We just need min x and max x. And we can just change this around, and and that will work as accordingly. So uh, if x root one is less is greater than min x, and x root one is less than max x, then we know we're on the line. We found an intersection, um, and it's nice and beautiful. We can add the point x root one, y root one. Perfect. Same thing over here. We're basically going to copy all this code, really. Yeah, okay. 
Um, double x root two equals, and we're just gonna copy this x root two, and this is the mi this is the adding term because the plus or minus root of four ac a to b plus. Oh, whoops, sorry, wrong minus. That would have not gone well. I did this right correctly here. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So now we can do the same thing for the y's. Oops. Come on. Y root y root two equals m one times x root two. There we go. And now we have to do the same thing here. Um, x root two plus equals circle x. X. Uh, just let's just copy this one. Make these a two. Okay, so we're res we're resetting our offset there. And finally, we do the same thing as this. Now the our, our min and max x aren't changing, so we don't have to worry about recalculating those. And there we go. So this is going to sometimes fail, and it's going to fail in if there's no intersection. Not 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 in like if the circle was here and it still intersects with the line, but not in the bounding box. But what if the circle was really over here and it really didn't intersect with any of the lines? So that's a bad example. Where where could it not inter? Yeah, say it did. It was like over here and it never it didn't intersect with any of the lines. Then we've got a problem. This will throw an intersection. Uh, it's not intersection, an exception, and we'll have to worry about it in the catch case. Good practice is always just use generic exceptions. Don't worry. If, I'm just kidding. No, this is horrible practice. In fact, it's 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 complaining about it. And but I, I the problem is I don't know what exception it would throw if it would be like a if it would be um, a divide by zero error or what would happen. It would probably be a square root of a, rate, a negative number. But anyways, it could be a lot. Just do do exception. If there was any problems, then we know there's no roots. Um, and then finally, we can return all points. Oh, I would think I was going to do something in here, but then... Yeah, I think we're fine. I was thinking of adding them anyway, but... Yeah, okay, so that... So there we, got, there we have it. We got the line circle intersection working. Um... We'll, we'll be using this a lot in the next couple of tutorials. I'm sorry this tutorial was a little bit boring. Um, I hope I explained this uh, well enough. If you want, um, uh, you can ping me on Discord if you want like more explanation on this. But yeah, basically the process, what you can just go into like a solver like Mathematica or Symbol Lab and just type in your equation. And it really saves a lot of time from solving it by hand because we, we don't want to do that it's just not there's there's room for mistakes and you're going to be debugging it forever just just know your basic algebra skills and then go from there all right so i guess that concludes the second tutorial we've got the line circle intersection thank you so much guys